Good afternoon, everyone. Brother Mike here again. I hope we're all watching the news that is coming out of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem after Ben Giver, the new Israeli Minister of Security, um, took a walk or a stroll um, on the Temple Mount grounds. I hope we're all watching that because the situation looks like it is absolutely set to explode. So I hope we're all watching that. Um, folks, the news that Ben Gevere was taking a stroll simply along the Temple Mount was absolutely um, taken out of proportion all over Arab news media, um, news media outlets um, such as TRT and News Live. They've all made it out as if Ben Gevir was storming the Temple Mount, which of course we know is not the case. But I wanted to give you guys this article. Um, ben Gevir is said to order police to remove Palestinian flag wherever it flies. So all across Israel, um, Ben Gevir has ordered police to remove the Palestinian flag, which of course, as we all know, will simply serve to cause even more tensions in this already volatile situation. Public Security Minister Itamar ben Gavir has ordered Israeli Police Commissioner Kobe Shabtai to remove Palestinian flags wherever they fly in public areas in Israel. The network cites unnamed police officers saying they do not know what to make of the new directive by the far-right politician since cops are currently only allowed to remove the banners if they are deemed to risk causing public disturbance. As part of recent coalition negotiations, Ben Gavir has received unprecedented control over police policy. So folks, we were watching the Temple Mount, we see this as all heating up to a boiling point. I'm gonna play this quick video um, for you guys. Um, from the Palestinian UN representative speaking out um, in the United Nations um, to Israel over the Temple Mount. Here he goes. Video. Has outlasted Begin, Shamir, and Sharon, and, and will outlast Netanyahu in his bed. Listen carefully to me. They should stop you. This, this council should stop you. It is their responsibility. The responsibility of this council and all of and all of all states to uphold international law and the historic fact. They should stop you. But make no mistake, if they don't, our Palestinian people will. Gilad Erdan stormed Al Haram a few years ago, for the same reason Ben Gvir did so a few days ago. They are pursuing the same agenda, the one they confessed to, altering the historic fact. I'll let you listen to that part. But make no mistake, if they don't, our Palestinian people will. They should stop you. But make no mistake, if they don't, our Palestinian people will. They should stop you. But make no mistake, if they don't, our Palestinian people will. Now, folks, we all know where this is headed. We all know that tensions are boiling at this point. We all know that um, the Islamic nations, Islamic Jihad, Hamas, Hezbollah, all the enemies of Israel, they are gunning for any, anything to happen, waiting and using any situation to inflame situations on the Temple Mount. And folks, this is all spiritual. This is all found in the Bible. Um, turn to Zechariah chapter 12. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord which stretches forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about, when they shall be in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. 
and in that day I will make will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Now, folks, we are seeing the rhetoric heating up against Israel. We are seeing um, more and more tensions and conflicts arising um, on the Temple Mount. The United Nations um, are increasing increasingly using more aggressive rhetoric against the Jewish state of Israel. And we are fast approaching that time, that time where this possibly might erupt into a global, global war, or the beginning of World War III. We'll go back to Zechariah chapter 12, 9. It shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem, and we are possibly seeing the coalition of nations that will come against Israel in the last days. Now folks, the Bible is real. Jesus is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is alive. And the Bible tells us what is happening in these last days, what to expect in these last days. So wars and rumors of wars, we are seeing that. We've seen plagues and pestilences, famines and earthquakes in diverse places. All of these coming as a great convergence in these last days. Now folks, uh, just look around you at the world. Wherever you look, there is some form of conflict, some form of unrest. It is time to repent and believe the gospel that is in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. It is time to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, for he is Savior, Savior of all the world, and there is none other. We are saved only through the blood of the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. This is the reason that Jesus Christ came into this world. God himself was manifested in the flesh, was born of the virgin, lived a perfectly sinless life, fulfilling that law, that holy law that we could never fulfill, the law that condemned us. And he was crucified in our place, nailing our sins and ordinances that was against us, contrary to us, as the Bible tells us, to his cross. And through his shed blood, we have peace with the Father. So Jesus died the death that we should have died, went to that cross as the final and full atonement for all of our sins, past, present, and future, destroying the works of the devil, was buried and raised to life and glory on the third day. And all who would believe on him and trust in him as their Savior are permanently and instantly saved and sealed and become a child of God by his Holy Spirit. That is the circumcision that is done without hands, i.e. nothing that we could work for, nothing that we could, um, <clears throat> nothing that we could do ourselves. It is an unseen spiritual circumcision and it is a work of God. Salvation is a work of God that is a gift of God. Nothing that we could do, nothing that we could work for, Nothing that we certainly deserve, so praise the Lord for giving us his only begotten Son, that through him that we have peace with the Father. So folks, it's time to get saved in these last days. Pay attention to what is happening all around this world, for the Lord is merciful, sending us warnings after warnings after warnings. So it's time to repent, believe the gospel. That is in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. God bless you.